Hi guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name's Chloe and this is my channel. Make sure you like this video, also don't forget to subscribe, it's free, so why wouldn't you want to? Also put that bell notification on so you don't miss a single video. So like the main reason why I'm doing this video is because being at school, my school only had like three cameras to share between GCSE and A-level. I was lucky enough to have my own camera. For those people that had to use their phones, it would have been nice to just know how to use their phone. The cameras on our phones nowadays are sometimes even better than the cameras that we own. However, you need to know how to use your phone properly to get the outcome that you want. So I'm just going to be sharing some little tips with you about how you can take those Instagrammable pictures or if you're just trying to get some good photos for your schoolwork and you don't have access to any good cameras. So I have an iPhone XR. My XR is a 128GB and one of the main reasons why I got it was because of the camera. P20 Huawei phone has got a very good camera, it's got better reviews and everything, but obviously being an iPhone user, I'm so used to having an iPhone, it's just kind of like one of those things. So the first thing that I would suggest that you do is shoot in live. If you've got live photos, take advantage of that. If you're stood there for ages trying to take a picture at a particular point, it can be really, really hard to get that person mid-air if you wanted them mid-air, you know, that kind of thing. So if you shoot in live, it means that you can freeze the picture where you want to freeze it. So tip number two, put a grid on your phone. Most people hate this, but it actually is very useful. To get the grid on your phone, you need to go into settings, you need to scroll down to camera, and here you can see loads of settings, there's the grid one. Just turn it on, it just makes everything so much easier, it makes it so much more simple as well. While we're here, I thought I would just point out, for those of you that don't know, but your phone can shoot in 4K. For the people that don't really understand that, it's just very, very, very good resolution. My phone actually records in better resolution than my camera that I'm using right now. They film on my Canon G1X. So when I'm filming and my camera dies, or my SD card's full and I don't have any spares, I can always film on my phone and it's just as good quality. But to turn that on, if you go to record video and you can see all the selections there, but in 4K at 60 frames per second, that is very good quality. Be aware that it's going to take up more storage on your phone when you're recording stuff. That's the kind of price you have to pay for having better quality videos. Another thing that's great about that is that you can actually take screenshots from your footage and they are still just as good quality as when you are taking photos on your phone. Just another tip there. Tip 2.1. So just by having this grid on, it will just make your images better because it will help you think about composition. It will help you have straighter lines in your horizon. For those of you that are kind of new to photography, rule of thirds is like one of the main things that you should know. So an image has got four lines across it. Right now I am central, but I am in the middle third of the in the image. If I'm over here, I'm in the right third, and if I'm over here, I'm in the left third. This composition will just make some of your images better. If you offset your main subject, you can get more background in, or it just makes it more visually pleasing for the eye. These lines just help you sort that out. You can also do this in cropping as well. This is one of my massive pet hates. I cannot stand it if I see some horizon lines that aren't straight. We've all done it, you know, I notice little things in photographs that do annoy me. Simple things that will just make your photos better is by making sure things are straight. Again, you can use these lines as guides. So if you're watching this video and you're someone that takes photos like this, please stop. Just please stop. It just, it just isn't good, okay? So my next tip is focusing. By tapping your phone in different places determines where your main focus point is. It also can affect the light on your phone. If your subject's in the middle and they are backlit by the sun, half the time if you tap on their face, the background will be blown out. If you tap on the background, there will just suddenly be a silhouette. If this is what you're going for, then go for it. But sometimes it can be a bit difficult. When you tap on your phone screen, you can see a little sundial, and this scrolls up and scrolls down. It can just help you alter the lighting in your image and it can be really, really useful. Talking about backlit stuff, if you have backlit, it's usually going to be a silhouette. If you have frontlit, it just makes the colours 
pop a bit more and if you have side lighting it usually just helps with the texture and that kind of stuff so my next tip is about angles getting low and getting high this is more for if you're taking images of people like fashion photography maybe as an example or you're just trying to get a really good Instagram picture for your friend by moving about and not just staying at eye level can really help eye level can just be boring sometimes it's sometimes interesting to look at something from a different perspective so by using angles you can get different outcomes if you go low to the ground you can make your subject look longer and taller and if you use a higher angle you can make them look shorter and smaller i prefer to use a low angle but it's just personal preference one of the biggest tips i could ever give you about taking photos on your phone is do not zoom do not do it do not zoom please do not do it it will just make your photos look crusty like that's the only word that i can describe how the images look when you zoom in on a phone if you want to get closer to your subject simply get closer the camera on our phone isn't quite having a lens on a camera like a telephoto one it's just not capable of doing that kind of thing and that kind of quality so like i just said just move closer to your subject it's really that simple another thing that is a tiny investment but can make a massive difference is investing in a macro lens that clips onto your phone i did have a dslr when i was doing my a levels but I only had two lenses. I had a telephoto lens and I also had an 18 to 55 kit lens, which is rubbish. It says macro on it, but it's not macro lens. I wanted to take some macro photos, but I couldn't do it on my camera. So I bought a lens that clips onto the front, the back, the front, whatever part of, whatever you want to call the back and the front. But this camera here, you can get ones that are wide angle lens, you can fish eye lenses as well, and you can get macro lenses. You can get some that are like three in one and they all twist onto each other. You can get super close to things and they're an amazing focus as well. Invest in a clip on lens. So this is something that not many people actually know about your phone, but your phone kind of has a spirit level in it. If you hold your phone directly up, you can see like a cross in the center of it and that kind of tells you whether you're like directly facing up and it works when you turn your phone down as well. If you're taking photos directly up in the middle of a street, it's just nicer to have it directly up than like at an angle. Personal preference, but, but I just thought I'd let you guys know that that is a thing on iPhones. I don't know if it's a thing on other phones, but it definitely is on iPhones. So something else that people might not know, but you can actually do long exposures on your phone. If you have live photos, you can do this easy peasy lemon squeezy. Here's a picture that I took in Dartmoor. It's of just a little stream, so you need to make sure you've got a live photo. If you swipe up, there's effects. You can have loop, you can have bounce, and that's kind of like what Instagram does, so you can make your own boomerang. But there's also long exposures, and if you click on that, it creates this kind of misty effect. Usually for this you would have to set a tripod up and put it on a long exposure. That took me seconds to take that on my phone and instantly it's a long exposure. You don't have to worry about aperture or ISO or shutter speed or anything like that. It just does it for you and it's amazing. So if you do have an iPhone, please do take advantage of that and experiment with it. You can probably mess about with sparklers, you can mess about with glow sticks, so live photos doesn't take a long enough clip for you to probably write out a full name. If you did a couple letters, you could probably then take it into Photoshop and merge it all together if you wanted to do that kind of stuff with light painting. It's possible to do without a camera um, and I think that's probably one of the best things ever. So my last tip is panos. Most people just use them for landscapes but if you're wanting to get your subject in an image and you can't get the whole background that you want, so say if you're stood in front of a really tall building and you want that whole building in the image, turn your phone sideways and do a pano up. This will work really, really well. You can get the whole shebang in and it will look good. You can also experiment with these and they're kind of fun to do as well. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. I really hope you found it useful. If you guys want to see how I edit my photos, please do stick around. Go check my Instagrams out. I've got my personal account and I've also got a photography account. I'll leave them linked at the end of this video as well as down in the description below. Thank you again for watching this video and have a good week.